Welcome to Spooky Stories. Get ready for hair-raising narratives and paranormal encounters. Subscribe now for your daily dose of the unknown. Let's begin. I searched my parents' names on the dark web. The videos I found were horrifying. When my friend first introduced me to the dark web, I was amazed at how such an unknown thing could house some of the most illegal things on earth. Up until today, I had only used it for learning how to code and commit small crimes, but after the horrifying videos I just found, I don't think I'll ever use the dark web again. I first met my best friend Alex when a little bit after I got into high school. My parents had moved us to a new town and I had no friends, it was lonely at first, but I got used to it. We moved because they were paranoid after many murders occurred in our town. I thought this was weird, moving across the country over that, but I let it go. The reason Alex and I became friends so quickly was because we both had a shared interest in the internet and everything it had to offer. I was a gaming addict and a tier 3 Pokemon subscriber, while he was more of a coder and developer. Two years later we were still best friends. But now, we were much older and smarter. Alex had discovered the dark web and he was obsessed with it. He pretty much spent every hour of the day on it searching through anything you could imagine. There was nothing wrong with this, but one search he made was the biggest mistake of his entire life. I remember waking up to dozens of text messages from him one morning. This wasn't normal. Alex wasn't a very social person and it was very hard to get words out of him. I opened my phone to see what he had messaged me. Dude Jack, you have to come over right now, this is important. Jack, please wake up, this is urgent. Where are you? These were only some of the messages, but the rest were very similar, with them all being urgent, and that I needed to go to his house immediately. My parents were both at work still, so I went over to Alex's house. When I arrived, there were four cop cars parked in front of his house, and there were dozens of people in news vans standing out front. I made my way through the crowd and Alex's mother told the police to let me inside. I could see tears rolling down her cheeks as she opened the door. What's going on Mrs. Gonzalez? I asked. Alex missing. She said as she started crying. My heart sank. How could this happen? He had just texted me earlier that morning. That was when it hit me. What if he was trying to warn me? What if his text messages were related to his disappearance? Still in shock, I walked up to one of the detectives in the kitchen. Is Alex going to be okay? I asked. Of course he is. He's going to be just fine. We're going to find him very soon, one of the detectives responded. Something about that response was off. It was like I knew he was wrong. Deep down I had this slight feeling that I wasn't going to see him ever again. I remembered the text messages however, and pulled out my phone to show it to the detective. He texted me this morning. What if this has something to do with him going missing? I said swiftly. As he began reading them, his expression quickly changed. It was like it got worse. He told me they needed to keep my phone for now to investigate the text messages, and said they would give it back to me later. I stayed around the house for a while, not just because I missed Alex, but because I wanted to comfort his parents. They cared about me a lot, and it hurt to see them like that. His mother couldn't stop crying. Eventually, however, I went into Alex's room to see if I could find anything that might give a clue about why he went missing. I searched through everything, but I found nothing, but then I noticed something. Alex's computer was on, but his monitor was turned off. I looked for the button to turn it on and hit it. As the screen lit up, my heart sank. He was on the dark web. Obviously this was normal, but for some reason, he had dozens of different tabs opened. I knew this part wasn't normal, so I closed the door and locked it, and began going through them. At first it was all pretty usual for him, but then things started to get weird. He had a tab open that was an article about a murder that had happened several years ago. 
the article said that it was a woman who was found dead in her apartment. Her body was mutilated, cut up, and covered in acid. I nearly threw up reading it and seeing the horrifying pictures of the crime scene. Not wanting to see any of it anymore, I switched the tab, just to reveal another article about another murder. Confused, I quickly went through the rest of the tabs he had opened, and they were all the same thing. They all were about some type of murder or crime. The one that stuck out the most to me, however, was one about a murder that had happened two years ago. At first it seemed pretty normal, but as I read further, I realized what it was. It was about the murder of our neighbor that prompted us to move away. Confusion quickly swept over me. How did Alex know about this? I never told him about it, because to me, it wasn't that important. I figured it must have just been a strange coincidence, but then I saw the last search he had made on his computer. It was my last name. Horrified and confused, I quickly stumbled out of his room and back to the living room. Is everything alright? Alex's mother said, sniffing away her tears. Yeah, I just need to go home for dinner. I responded. On the way home, so many questions and thoughts filled my mind. Why was he searching up my last name? Did he think that I had something to do with this? That must have been why he was texting me so frantically that morning. If only I could just explain to him that I didn't do anything wrong, but I couldn't. He was still missing, and I had to find out why. When I got home, I raced to my room and slammed the bedroom door shut and got on my computer. I loaded up my Tor browser and turned my VPN on. I knew what I had to do. I began typing in the letters of my last name, becoming more nervous after every letter. When I finally hit enter, nothing happened. It was just a blank screen. Confused, I refreshed the page, but once again, there was nothing. But why did Alex search this if there was nothing, I thought to myself. There must be something out there. I was getting ready to close the tab, thinking I had ran into a dead end, when suddenly, the page started to load. It took several minutes, but finally, it loaded to reveal hundreds of videos. Immediately, I knew what they were. They were murders, but why did they show up when you searched my last name? I considered just stopping right there and turning back, knowing the horrifying things I would see if I continued on, but I couldn't. I knew this had to be why Alex went missing, so I clicked on the first video. As it started playing, I saw what looked like a woman strapped to a chair in some sort of basement or something. I quickly recognized who it was. It was our neighbor from two years ago. I could tell because she had the same heart-shaped tattoo on her neck. She sat there for a minute, struggling, panicking, and screaming for someone to help. However, suddenly, two figures walked into frame. At first, I couldn't tell who they were, but as they turned around to face the camera, my heart sank. It was my parents. My father was holding a knife, while my mother was holding a small scalpel. They paused for a moment, before they started what was the most horrifying five minutes of my entire life. I watched as they cut her into pieces, and listened as she begged for mercy, screaming the whole time. Blood filled the room as she took her last breath. When the video ended, it quickly went to another, revealing the exact same room and chair I had seen before. I was traumatized by what I had already seen, and I knew I couldn't watch any more of it. My parents were murderers, and I now knew the real reason we moved away two years ago. I knew there was something off about that, but I just never could have imagined that this was the horrifying secret that they had been hiding from me. This whole time I thought Alex was trying to accuse me of being responsible for these murders, but I was so wrong. He was trying to warn me. I scanned through more of the videos, each in the exact same room. I was just about finished, ready to go to the police so that I could tell them about what I had just seen when I noticed something. There was a new video uploaded today on the website. I quickly clicked on it and pressed play to reveal what looked like a man this time, strapped to the chair. 
He had a sack over his face, and I couldn't tell who it was. Once again, however, I saw my parents walk into the frame. My father walked up to the man and pulled the sack off his head. At first, I couldn't tell who it was, but then I realized who I was looking at. It was Alex. If you enjoy this type of content and would like to see more of it and support the channel, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications. Thanks for joining us on Spooky Stories. If you enjoyed the tales of the unknown and the eerie, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell to stay updated with our latest bone-chilling narratives. Until next time, stay curious and keep the chills coming.